In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, and by the way, I do apologize. I actually don't have the graphic up on the screen today. I didn't get a chance to do one. Like I said, everything's kind of a whirlwind right now, trying to get everything ready for the students to come back this week. But I did want to address this. I saw a post the other day that I actually thought was pretty insightful. And what it addressed is something that we, I'm sure if you run in Christian circles, probably hear quite a bit when you're going through something, when there's some kind of issue going on in your life, you've heard that, well, God wouldn't put on you more than you can stand. And this guy's a brother that I respect. And he actually said in this post in response to it that, well, actually God gives you more than you can stand all the time. And the expectation is that you're going to have more than you can handle. And it's an exercise in faith to turn those things over to God to let him handle them. Which, by the way, is doctrinally sound. I don't disagree with anything in that statement. However, I do believe that it is incorrect to completely dismiss this little bit of biblical wisdom, that God will not give you more than you can handle. And I think a better way to describe it would be going directly to the Scripture itself, and this is actually one of my favorite passages in 1 Corinthians 10.13. And this Scripture states, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. So here we have a very clear example of the Apostle Paul talking about in, to the Corinthian brethren who were undergoing a pretty difficult time. We have wisdom coming from him that says God's not going to allow you to be put into a situation where you will be incapable of overcoming that temptation. In other words, you're never going to be tempted to sin and then just sin as an effect of, well, there was nothing you could do. Because God is a God of a lot of things, but one gift that he gave mankind that is universal is free will. And if he were to allow you to be put into a temptation situation, where the temptation was so strong that you didn't have the option of resisting, well, then that wouldn't be free will, would it? And so God understands that people can endure a different level of temptation. He knows you. He knows your heart. And because he does, he's not going to allow you to be put in a situation that you will be incapable of escaping. And typically when people say God's not going to give you more than you handle, that's what they're talking about. Now, are you going to be put in situations that the only way of escape, because a way of escape is the way that the Scripture presents it, that the only way of escape is to rely on God and to fall into His hands? Yeah, I think that's biblical too. All it said is God is going to provide a way of escape. He didn't necessarily say that that way of escape is going to come from you picking yourself up by the bootstraps and figuring it out on your own. I don't think that's what He wants from us anyway. Now, there are times where He does. Just like any loving father, there are times where he perceives that there is something that we are going to fall, we are going to not be able to accomplish on our own, and so he gives us a hand. There are going to be other times where God sees us struggling and may want to help us, but as any good father's response is going to be, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. Those two things happen. Any of you that have kids, or heck, any of you that have been children, which would be all of you, and have had a parent figure in your life, understand that that's something that a good parent occasionally does. Sometimes they look at you and see that you're in a situation that you are in over your head, something that you cannot handle. And of course, that changes over the course of your lifetime. For example, a parent's going to help you out when you're a baby. A situation that you can't handle is feeding yourself. Obviously, that, become, that becomes much less of a concern the older you get. But 
the point in all of that is, is that God is always going to provide a means of escape. And so when someone says to you that God is not going to give you more than you can handle, that's accurate. Now, sometimes more than you can handle or the situation that you can't escape is going to be calling out to God for help and having him showing up and delivering you. That's going to occasionally be the answer to that situation or to a situation. And sometimes it's going to be based on your own spiritual maturity and, and the kind of circumstances surrounding it that you're going to have to endure it. That's also something that 1 Corinthians 10.13 preaches about. But ultimately what it comes down to is God is fair. He's going to give you a fair shake. Sometimes over using these phrases that we have detracts from that or it kind of oversaturates us with that idea to the point to where we get there and we all of a sudden don't really understand the magnitude of it. I think that's also true. It's sort of like, and I gave this analogy to him, the What Would Jesus Do movement. You remember you used to have the WWJD bracelets? The meaning of that was actually pretty profound. But it got so oversaturated in the culture that it became kind of meaningless, where it became more of a fad than a lifestyle. Because really, if a person genuinely lives out his life, constantly asking himself, what would Jesus do, and then allows that to affect him in such a way that he lives like Christ, yeah, that, that's a pretty good life model to follow, honestly. But we all know that the vast majority of the people that were wearing those were not people that actually believed it or were willing to live it out and make the sacrifices that that entails. And there were people that didn't get involved in it that were absolutely strong enough and did that long before it became a fad. And the same thing is true with this phrase. There have been people, Christians, for two millennia now that have been living under the idea that God is not going to give me more than I can handle. That if I am caught in such a situation, he is going to provide a means of escape. The means of escape might be him. The means of escape might be something that I have to figure out or I have to get together with my Christian brothers and sisters and figure out. But the point is, the way of escape is there. And that is the overarching premise behind that. So let's remember that if we are having a Christian brother or sister going through something that may be horrific or so tremendous that they don't believe that they can get through it, then when we say, don't worry, God won't give you more than you can handle, is that no matter what, God is going to figure out a way to deliver us. Stay the course, friends. <laughs>